I think the focus has been on, first of all, getting to know the people, getting to know people inside the bank, but also our clients, governments and, and the multilateral banks and the others whom we partner with. But then the second big part has been to start by redefining the vision and mission of the bank. And so the vision, as it now is amended, is not just focused on poverty, although that's the key, but it also adds on the fact that we want to focus on a livable planet. So it's eradicating poverty on a livable planet. And the reason for livable planet is to include the challenges of climate change and pandemics and fragility and conflict and things that have become intertwined challenges without, if you don't pay attention to all of them, it's very difficult to deal with poverty in a vacuum. We said that we would, by 2025, try and get 45% of our financing to be focused on climate-related expenditure. Now, what do we mean by that? We said half on mitigation, which is typically energy emissions and their management, but half on adaptation. And I think adaptation is a key part of what the developing countries are looking for, because they feel they weren't the ones who created this situation. Their energy consumption is still a small proportion of the total, and their emissions-heavy energy consumption is a small proportion. But they do feel that they are suffering at the other end of the impacts of climate change. The second big thing we're working on is how to get resources to some of these uh, developing countries. Now, part of it is how can we leverage our balance sheet better, which is the capital adequacy work that we're working on, from our loan to equity ratio to the new financing instruments we've launched, uh, portfolio guarantees and hybrid capital, all of which tend to increase the envelope of what we can do with our lending. But a second part of that also is the IDA replenishment that we're looking for in December. IDA typically goes to 75 of the least advantaged countries in the world right now. And so getting a good replenishment on IDA at the end of the year will enable a great deal of, let's say, ambition going forward in how IDA is used for those countries. And I think the fact is that 1.1 billion young people in the global south are going to become ready for jobs in the next decade. We're currently on a pathway to generate 325 million jobs. And that's a big gap, and you want to make sure that you get a demographic dividend from these young people. And one of the ways of doing that is jobs. Jobs and growth are the best way to fight poverty in every which way. If you like this video, then like, share, and subscribe to ET Now.